Hi, my name is Guinevere Stacio. People usually call me Gwen, and I am a mom of two and a woman on a mission to help you build a profitable online business using digital marketing or affiliate marketing. Using the system that I'm going to be talking about today in this video, I was able to grow my social media from absolutely zero to over 4,000 followers in less than three weeks online. Better yet, all of these followers are warm and ready to buy. So while the digital world keeps growing, social media is one of the greatest tools that you can utilize to grow your digital marketing business. Now, you've got plenty of platforms to choose from, right, where you can promote your product for free. And once you get this going, you'll have a social media audience full of people that are interested and ready to buy. In this video, I'll be sharing some valuable tips and the exact strategies that I use to help you optimize your social media presence for affiliate marketing or freelance digital marketing success. So be sure to download the free PDF so that you can follow along, take some notes, and get off the ground quickly in creating a profitable online business. All right, before we get to the good stuff, make sure you like this video and click the subscribe button so that you don't miss out on any future videos that can help you make money online. First and foremost, if you're just starting out, you're going to start a brand new social media account. Now, I know that sounds very scary because if you've been on social media and you've built a following, it may have felt hard to get there. But trust me when I say the best thing that you can do is to start from zero. Start a brand new social media account. Now, the only exception here is Facebook. I actually use my personal profile on Facebook because I'm pretty sure that Facebook doesn't like you creating multiple personal profiles and they really only have business pages as alternative options. So in the past, I haven't found great conversion with business pages on Facebook. So for my affiliate marketing business, I just started posting on my personal profile. Every Everything else, you're going to start a brand new account for each niche. So please start with just one niche at a time. You might actually never create content for a second niche, but just in case you do, I want you to know this. Starting from zero while humbling, if you've ever grown another platform, is the key to targeting your ideal client and getting ready to buy followers to follow you or subscribe. All right, so hopefully you already have a niche and a product or service that you're affiliated with. This is a general term, niche, for what topics you'll be posting and promoting. If you're in affiliate marketing or digital marketing already, you might have somewhat of an idea. But for those who are new, a niche can be finance, fitness, relationships, health and wellness, pets, etc. The top three money-making niches are wealth, health, and relationships. So this just means that people are more likely to spend money to look better, feel better, be loved, and make more money. But of course, you can pick any niche that interests you. And you are going to want to pick something that you have interest in because you're going to want to have fun doing this. Here's a tip, okay? I cannot stress enough how important it is to pick a high-quality, high-ticket affiliate partner who can convert traffic into sales in the first place, and then provide a high quality training on the back end that allows them to use incredible sales processes to close customers on the back end and earn you high ticket commissions. Choosing the right affiliate partner who has great sales processes in place can make or break your entire affiliate marketing business. I hope you hear that loud and clear. The affiliate partner that I found has an incredible high conversion rate. And conversion rate just simply means that they convert potential customers or leads into paying customers or sales at a very high rate, which means I get paid more often. So if you're not sure how to do this, I learned everything I needed in the course linked in the description of this video. It was $7 and it gave me all the information that I needed to set myself up for success. Okay, next, you're going to want to identify your ideal client. Why do we need to do this? Well, this is who we're going to be talking to. Have you ever watched a video on social media that started off with, hey, friends, did you feel like they were talking to you or are they talking to everyone? <laughs> Honing in on your ideal client allows you to speak directly to him or her, right? It is much more personable when someone says, hey, are you a nurse who's tired of working overnight shifts? 
you feel like, oh, I'm being seen. So if your target market is a nurse and someone says, are you a nurse who, right? It's more personable and you feel like you want to keep watching because that person's talking specifically to you rather than when they say, hey friends, and it's kind of like a general statement. The more that you can hone in on this ideal client, the better your conversions will be. If someone feels like you're talking to them specifically, they're much more likely to stick around and feel seen and heard. Answer this question, who do you help and why? Most likely this person, this ideal client is a previous version of you. So if it helps, think about you just a few steps back. How old were you? What were you doing? What did you wish for? What were your pain points? What were you complaining about? If it's not a previous version of you, think of a friend that you have or someone that you know that fits your ideal client avatar. What's their name? What's their age? How deep can you go into describing this person? Because the more that you have a, a painted picture of this person, the easier it will be for you to create content that's actually going to pull in your ideal clients. Pain points. A lot of people will say, you don't want to talk to someone's pain points. But in all honesty, these are the things that people are coming to the Google machine to search or YouTube to search. They're searching because they have pain points. So if someone's overweight and having a hard time figuring out how to lose weight, do they want to make better food choices? Maybe they're searching, how do I make better food choices, right? Or I, I want to make better food choices, but I feel like I don't know where to start. Maybe they're stuck in a job that they hate, but they aren't sure what steps to take to get out and start making money on their own, right? These are pain points for people. You can get very specific here. What are they saying to their friends when they call them up? Oh, I just don't know if I can stand working for my boss another day, right? I want to lose weight, but I like food too much. What words are they saying? Because the clearer you can get on this, the clearer you can get on your marketing and speaking to your ideal client with things like your title and your content and your hooks, which we'll talk about a little bit further in this video. So one great way to do research on this is to head to YouTube and start searching or Pinterest. These are two great search engines where people are looking to help solve their pain points. If you search, I just want to lose weight, and see what blog posts are coming up that people are writing about, what YouTube videos are titled. This can give you a great idea about what your ideal client might be searching in the search bar or saying to their friends. Next, you wanna think about where they're hanging out. What social media platforms are your ideal clients hanging out on? Because we think that everyone's just kind of hanging out in the same place, but it's really not true. What are they searching for? Are they hanging out on Instagram or Facebook? Are they scroll holing just to escape the day that they just had, right? Are they on YouTube searching for ways to lose weight or make more money? Are they on TikTok searching for ways to make money online? Start to research these platforms and see where your ideal client is hanging out. This is going to be where you start posting content. So it's a great thing to have an idea on. You don't want to put your all into growing an Instagram if your ideal client is not hanging out on Instagram, right? So if you've been using any of the social media platforms and you've been posting around your niche, you can actually use your social media analytics and insights to see who's liking, who's watching and saving your posts. Are they men? Are they women? How old are they? Where are they located? This can be super helpful in moving forward. But if you haven't been posting in your niche before and you don't have any of these analytics, the tools that we just talked about as far as searching, uh, search terms, and what your ideal clients are talking about, what they're saying to their friends, are all going to help you decide where to show up on social media and what kind of content to start to produce. Now, selecting the right social media platform. <clears throat> There are so many to choose from. We have Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Pinterest, Twitter, et cetera. The most popular social media platforms used for digital and affiliate marketing are Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, YouTube, and Pinterest. There's five. Each of these platforms are very different, okay? So when you're first starting out, I would encourage you to master one. Start to feel comfortable with one and then move on. I'm gonna show you how to do that too. Okay. So here is where we want to be sure to choose the platform that our ideal client is hanging out on. <clears throat> so for example, in my niche of making money online, I knew my clients were hanging out on TikTok 
looking for short videos to grab their attention about making money online. Most were moms scrolling in the in-between hours or when everyone went to bed. And they wanted simple solutions, which means they don't want to watch long videos, the hooks need to be quick and, and really grabby, and it's going to be on TikTok. I also knew that once they saw affiliate marketing, they were heading to YouTube to search how to grow an affiliate marketing business, right? Starting to see how this works. These are all the tools that you're going to use for research to figure out where to post, what platform to master first, and how to know what to talk about. Once you get really clear on your ideal client, you can start to guess what they'll ask Google or search YouTube for. Like, does affiliate marketing really work? <laughs> is keto diet legit? Will keto diet help me lose weight? Like these are all things that our ideal clients, depending on what niche you are in, are searching the internet for. So let's break down the platforms a little bit more so you have an idea of where you'd like to start. And then I'll tell you my little tricks for posting on all the platforms and it's really easy. So there's definitely an age group difference for different platforms, right? Most of the people who are on Facebook are looking for photos of their family members. It's usually an older population. And I don't mean elderly. I just mean Facebook was one of the first social media platforms. So a lot of the people that originated on Facebook have just stayed on Facebook and they haven't moved to anything else, right? But this is not usually a great search tool and your posts do depend on the algorithm. So except for Facebook Reels, which seem to be pushed out better than posts, which we'll talk about later, you can do posts, you could do photos, videos, go live, you can have a link in your bio, regardless of the amount of followers that you have. So Facebook is great. It doesn't require you to be on video. It doesn't even require you to show your face. You can do tons of different types of posts, but I would say the personal page for Facebook is going to be key. Business pages aren't really getting pushed out. We'll talk about reels for Facebook later, but this is a hidden gem for marketing your affiliate marketing business. Then came Instagram. This is a little bit younger of a population. Um, and on Instagram, you can do posts, photos, videos, or carousels. You can even go live and you can have a link in your bio, regardless if you have a professional account or a personal account, and regardless of how many followers you have. Now, TikTok. <clears throat> there's actually a wide variety of ages on TikTok, um, and there's a great group of 50 plus, the age 50 plus users, growing quickly on TikTok. It's kind of great to see the age group of over 50 blowing up on TikTok. I love when people get out of their comfort zone and they're doing fun little 15 second videos. So there's a, a wide range of age groups looking and searching using TikTok. Now, TikTok does require you to do video and you can't necessarily link your website unless you have a professional account and you have over a thousand followers. But honestly, I don't have a business account or professional account because I prefer a personal account. And although my website isn't linked where someone could just click on it, I do have my website typed out in my bio. You can also connect your Instagram and or a YouTube account. And what's been happening for me is people are clicking on over to my YouTube and I do have videos populating there so they can also follow me on YouTube. Again, we'll talk about multi-posting across different platforms in a minute. Now, YouTube. YouTube is video only. Shorts under 60 seconds, so videos that are 60 seconds or less, or regular videos as long as you want. You can have a profile with a link to your website, and you can link your website or affiliate links in the descriptions of your videos as well. YouTube is a little bit harder to get up and running, but the great thing about YouTube is that your video does not necessarily depend on the algorithm. I mean, there is an algorithm inside of YouTube, but once you post your video, it lives on there forever. So imagine you have a video that does really, really well, and you decide to create a pin on Pinterest that then links to a video on YouTube, and that is a great conversion tool for you to use. So your, your post on YouTube, the video lives there until you take it down. Such a great way to connect your affiliate marketing business, okay? But um, your video can continue to bring in clients as long as it lives. Pinterest, now I just briefly talked about Pinterest, but there are so many ways to use this platform. And quite honestly, when I first started, I didn't think about using Pinterest for affiliate marketing, but 
Pinterest, you can actually post short videos now as well. So it's not necessarily the platform that you think of starting off with or um, mastering in the very beginning, but you can post a ton of different content on here. And it's another great way, especially if you don't want to show your face. You can use a free app like Canva to create a pin. And then on the pin, you can link anything you want. Your affiliate link, a YouTube video you made, you can link it to an Instagram video you have. People are using Pinterest like a search forum. So they're looking for solutions to their problems. If you create a pin that answers the solution to their problem and connects them to a video or another post that you've made, that's a great way to convert these clients, ideal clients into paying customers. So for example, I'm a mom of two girls. <clears throat> and when I'm looking for inspiring hairdos or my girls have a crazy hair day at school, the first thing I do is go to Pinterest and search crazy hair for kids. And a whole bunch of pins pop up and I let my kids pick a pin and then that's the hairdo that we do. Okay, if you've made it this far, I'd love to share a little tip that I've been using that's really helped me to grow my social media. So I decided to start on TikTok. Didn't really care about reach or virality or how many people saw my videos. I start here and I look at what other people are posting on my For You page. The For You page is where videos are being pushed out. They're the popular videos. They're the more viral videos. So I start to look and see what other people are doing and start to think about how can I use these and apply them to my niche, right? I look for popular trending sounds and I love that they're super short videos. Once I post to my TikTok, then I use snaptick.app, which I'll link below, and I download my TikTok video without the watermark, and I post it to my Pinterest, to my Facebook Reels, to my YouTube Shorts, and to my Instagram. Why do I do that? Well, other platforms like Instagram don't like when they see that you're repurposing something from TikTok and your video says TikTok on it and now you're posting it on Instagram. Instagram algorithm will not push that video out or have it seen by a lot of people because they don't want, they don't want people on their platform to leave Instagram and go to TikTok, right? So I use SnapTik dot app <laughs> and I download my video without the watermark. That way I have my video and I can use it wherever I want to. Once my video is already created on TikTok, it's so easy to go post it on Instagram, post it on YouTube shorts, and you never know how your video is going to do on every platform. I've had 7,000 views on one video on YouTube that had 200 views on TikTok. So you just never know. Like I said, you're going to want to master one platform first and feel really comfortable there before you start getting to posting to other platforms. But once you're ready to do that, that's when things can easily take off. I'm telling you, this has been one of the greatest hacks that I've used to post across different social media platforms. Okay. So although I start with TikTok, my ideal client or my ideal platform is Instagram because that's where my ideal client is hanging out. And it's where I've actually gained the most traction. I grew from zero to almost 4,000 followers in less than three weeks. <laughs> also, like I said, the same video can have a very different engagement on very different platforms. But when you're first starting, just keep it simple. You're going to post two to three times a day with valuable content on one platform. And then when you're ready to spread your wings, you can. All right. So social media used to be about posting this weekend going out photos and looking at albums of your friends. But as the digital world continues to grow exponentially, social media platforms are used for everything, including your ideal clients researching the content that you're posting about. So this is where posting valuable content is going to be really, really important. Your ideal clients are probably already scrolling social media, waiting for something to catch their eye. So I want to share with you a few tricks to getting your content seen. First of all is titles. What you title your video matters or your first words that you say matter. That's called your hook and it's how you'll grab someone's attention. And in the PDF document, the free PDF document I've given you below, it's a little like cheat code for your social media strategy. I've given you several helpful title examples on the free worksheet, which you can grab from the description. But a good thing to keep in mind is to make your title like potent and bold. One great tip for titling your content is to head to YouTube and search for terms your ideal client would search for, like make money online. Once you type that into your search bar, you're going to see a list of other populated search terms, and you can use that then to help you create titles and also help you create future content. 
When you're creating a short video, like on Instagram or TikTok, I like to have a cover photo with my title on the front or on TikTok, it's just a little square that they allow you to put your title in. I always, almost always add a title because I want people who are scrolling through or who come to my profile to be able to look and see, okay, which video do I want to watch? And it's easy for them to see. That way they know exactly what they're clicking on when they choose that video. Some platforms like YouTube Shorts and Facebook Reels don't allow you to have a cover photo with a title, which means that your actual title needs to be intriguing. It's the part that they see underneath your video, right? Like that first sentence that they see underneath your video needs to be intriguing enough for them to want to watch it. Hooks are different. They're the first thing that you say to get someone to lean in or keep listening. You win the algorithm game if you keep people on your video, right? That's the goal or on your post. The longer someone's on the post, the more the algorithm goes, oh, people are liking this post. They want to see it more, the more they push it out to people. So your goal is to keep people on your platform, on your video or your content longer. So use captivating, bold, intriguing, lean in hooks. And again, on the worksheet that you can download in the description below, I've given you a bunch of hooks to try. Get creative. What makes you stop your scroll when you're on social media, right? So start to pay attention to some of those things in your everyday life. When it comes to creating content, what you're going to post about, what you're going to talk about in your video, you're going to help your audience solve their problems. That's why we need to know what their pain points are, right? So for example, if your affiliate offers a weight loss supplement, maybe you share healthy recipes or workouts that will help them lose weight. If your affiliate is a course that helps people make money online, you're going to post about how stress is a killer and how leaving your nine to five can leave you stress-free or how making money online will decrease your stress, which makes you happier, right? Tell a story. This is the most important part of your content. People relate to stories because they can see themselves in the story. So everything that you do on a day-to-day -day basis relates to your niche and your business. So for example, yesterday we went shoe shopping. My daughter needed sneakers and I have two kids. So you know, if you have two kids, you're not just going to walk into the store and have one kid get a new pair of sneakers and leave the other kid without getting one. Like there will be mayhem. There will be tantrums. We're not going to do that. So both kids get new sneakers, regardless of whether the other one needed them or not. But not that long ago, spending over a hundred dollars on sneakers I wouldn't have even gone into the sneaker store to look because I knew I didn't have enough money to cover their sneakers. I would have avoided them telling me that their shoes were tight. I would have told them to wear different shoes or something else. Now I can walk in the shoe store and not have to worry about buying my kids shoes when they need them. Heck, I can even get myself a pair of shoes without worrying that we have enough to pay the bills. Maybe you want to go grocery shopping without worrying about the cost, or you want to be able to go out and get your kids what they need without stressing over bills. Grab the link in my bio and get started just like I did. Do you see how that story is related to making money online? So everything that you do in your life can be related back to your business. Last but not least, always have a call to action in your content. You'll see a huge list of call to actions in the worksheet below, but here are a few examples. Grab the guidebook in my bio if you want to learn more. Comment below if you can relate. Drop your favorite emoji if you can relate. Like this video and follow along for more videos like this. Getting your audience to do something at the end of your video. And if it's like a comment, a share, a message, you better be responding to each and every one. This brings up our last tip about engaging with your audience. Remember, every single person just wants to be seen and they wanna be heard. And once you do that, you start to earn their trust and people will buy from other people that they trust. I will tell you that this has been what has grown my social media platform. I get message after message, comment after comment saying, I don't know why, but I just trust you. I don't know why you're just so authentic and I feel like I can trust you. And they usually jump in. When your audience trusts you, they'll ask for recommendations on how to enhance the process that you are selling or how to lose more weight quickly. And you can simply make a recommendation to your affiliate offer that gives them a supplement that can help them achieve their desired result and solve the problem for them. 
You can promote that product by simply telling them, hey, tap the link in my bio. They're going to come to you with questions because they trust you, they see you, and maybe you've made them felt seen or heard. And when people feel that way, they are now your warm audience and they are ready to buy. The more people that you have comment, like, and share your posts, the more the algorithm says people want to see this content and the more they'll push it out. So you always want to have a call to action on your posts. Here's what not to do when it comes to responding to comments and messages. I said how important this is. When you tell someone, comment below, please respond to their comment. Again, they just want to be seen and heard, and they just did what you told them to. And so now you are responding on the other side. Here's what not to do, though. Do not copy and paste the same response. I like to use the user's name if I can see it in their profile. So say like Mary1234 has commented on my post. When I reply to her comment, I'm going to say, thanks so much for your comment, Mary, and respond with whatever response there is, right? I also do the same thing in my messaging. Um, I'll say, Thank thanks, Mary, for your comment. I'm so happy to share more info with you because she asked me for more info, right? The other thing that I think has really helped me grow very quickly on social media is using voice notes. This has been key. Again, I cannot tell you how many people have messaged me and said, wow, I can't believe number one, that you messaged me back. And number two, you took the time to send me a voice note. Now I started to do this with every single person that commented asking me for more info, but my account blew up so fast and I was getting like 20 messages in the morning and then 20 in the afternoon and 20 in the evening that I started to lose my voice. I can't do voice messages for everybody, but I will voice message here and there, especially if someone is asking me genuine questions and being like genuinely nice in their comment or their message. It's a really nice touch and people feel like you took the time to see them and hear them out. Also, I save in my notes section on my phone, my link and a little sentence like, here's everything you need to know, and then my link to my affiliate. And I do copy and paste that in after I've made my comment or my message personal. So the key is just make your message personal. You want that person to be seen and heard. Then you can take your little copied link and you can share it with them if they've been asking you for more info. Once you do start to take off on social media, because trust me, if you're doing all these things, you're going to take off. I just remember, and this is going to be a tip for you, remember to sit down twice a day and respond to comments and messages. People are thinking that you just want to sell them something. And if someone comments because you asked them to comment and you don't reply to their comment, they're probably not going to buy from you because they're going to go, see, she just wanted to sell me something. So when you comment, people are like, oh my gosh, she commented back. Make it a priority uh, because they are more likely to become a customer that way. Also, another tip, you never know when something might take off. So keep on posting valuable content. Have fun with it. Be relatable, tell stories and connect with your people. The biggest reason why I've been growing so quickly is because people feel my authenticity and they relate to my story. I got vulnerable. You don't need to share every single detail of your life, but definitely let people know that here's the reason why I'm doing this. Here's the reason why I'm promoting this product. Here's how it changed my life. Like all these things are super important for people to hear. People will say to me, I related so much to your story, Gwen, and I really felt like I could also make a change and you have, you have enticed me to get going on this course, right? So don't think that just because you've told your story once that people will see it. Even if you've pinned it to the top of your profile, keep telling your story, um, keep sharing, release perfection. There's no right or wrong on social. In fact, the less perfect you are, I think the more relatable you are. Because when someone sees you sharing your story and maybe you had some ums or you stumbled or you cried, they're more likely to go, oh, I like her. She's just like me. And, and I'm like her and I relate to what she says. So just release perfection and just have fun. Now, I want to congratulate you on making it this far, okay? Now, I want to dive into a live example of how this works and give you your bonuses for sticking around. So let's chat profile. Instagram and TikTok are the easiest for this, but you can apply this to any social media platform. 
on your profile, you're only given a certain amount of characters, a certain amount of, of letters that you can have that tells people who you are and what you do. So you're going to want to make it short, concise, and easy to read. And wherever possible, you're going to add your link, but make sure that your link is a simple, short link. Here's an example. This is what I mean. Stan stores are really hot right now. If you want a 14 day trial and you want to try out a stand store, I have the link in the description below so you can try it out. But it's basically a souped up link in bio page or website really, but you can also accept payments on there. So let's say you're an affiliate for a product and you have your stand store, which is like a, let's think of it as like a web page without you having to build a web page. So simple. You have your link to your affiliate program. Now say in a couple months, you decide to write your own ebook or sell your own digital course. You can now plop that little course in your stand store and it takes them right to a payment right on that page basically building a website without you having to build a website. It is the simplest thing I've ever done. And profiles really like stand store links because they're short and they know exactly what they are. If you try to take your very long, usually very ugly affiliate link and put it in your profile, they will not let you. Uh, you'll either get an error or it's too long or it just won't it'll be a, a red flag for someone. Because when someone comes to a profile and they see this big, ugly link, people are not likely to click on that. So you can set up your own domain. You can um, get a stand store. And a lot of social media profiles are actually preferring personal domain names or stand store links. Some won't even let you post your affiliate link or your direct link in your profile. So in my profile, I have name, I have my I help statement. So I say, I help ordinary women create wealth and happiness from home and take their power back. I have a call to action. DM me ready to learn more. I have my opt-in, right? My opt-in is a free guide. So I say free beginner's guide with the arrow finger, the arrow emoji. And then underneath that is my link to my opt-in. My opt-in is where I collect emails always capture emails. This is how you truly grow your affiliate marketing business. If you don't know how to build an opt-in page or a sales funnel or create your email automations, grab the link to the training in the description of this video and get on that ASAP because you're missing out on hundreds of sales if you don't do that. That's how you're going to unlock even bigger monthly commissions. All right, so we talked about your niche. We talked about understanding your audience, their pain points, where they hang out, the different social media platforms and how to use them, tips and tricks for posting on more than one platform, creating compelling content, why engaging with your audience is important, and how to engage, and lastly, optimizing your social media bio. I can't wait to see what happens when you start implementing what you've learned here. Make sure you're subscribed and you turn on that bell so that you don't miss any future important videos. I truly want you to succeed in this and I can't wait to hear your updates. So please be sure to follow me on one of my social platforms and update me as you go. Remember to stay consistent, experiment, and adapt your social media strategy over time. Once you get the frequency down of posting, you can start using your social media to research other accounts and trends. I want to thank you for watching and don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more valuable content. I'll see you guys soon.